I know where there's some, right here in the hall clerk. No, no, my daddy. I Hi, and welcome back. Um, what's next for this radio is to see, we've got... Confusion about how to protect yourself from COVID. One thing is certain. AM working pretty well. Its sensitivity isn't great, uh, but that's probably because it's in dire need of an alignment. Now it's time to see if we have any FM. <coughs> Pardon me. So I'll switch over to the center of the band switch. And that should be post-war modern FM range. Turn the volume up. I have a pretty consistent hum in there somewhere. I'll have to track that down later. But let me move this semi-antenna over to the FM side. If I can, oh, all right, there. So now we have our antenna shifted over to the FM side. We should get something somewhere. That's a little something. Boy, it's not good though. It's uh, it's picking up a little bit of FM. The signal strength is really low. Um, so, how to approach this? Well, I think the first thing to do is to describe how the FM side of this radio, uh, the modern FM band, should be working uh, from front to back. And then we can go in here and look around and see what isn't working like it should be working. So let's get the schematic set up on the computer and uh, take a look at the signal path and what should be happening uh, inside this radio that clearly isn't quite happening. <laughs> Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Let's See start by taking a look at the block diagram for the AM radio. We went through this uh, in, oh, episode two, I think, of this series. Um, and we'll, s we'll then add in the FM stuff as it relates to this radio. So the AM side, this is a pretty standard um, heterodyne AM receiver. A lot, some some have RF amps, some don't, as you know. Um, but, a uh, signal comes in the antenna. Uh, the RF amplifier, oh, it's, it's usually selected for a station m m here in some tune circuit. Uh, the RF amplifier amplifies the radio signals, uh, goes through a detector coil, and into the converter where the RF from the radio station you're listening to is mixed with the frequency generated by an AM local oscillator. In most cases, it's the received frequency. It's if you're listening to 900 on the AM dial here, you'll get the received 900 plus 455 kilohertz generated by this oscillator. It goes into the converter or mixer converter uh, which mixes the original frequency and the local oscillator frequency to create a 455 kilocycle uh, intermediate frequency that carries the uh, audio information. That's passed by a IF transformer to the first IF amp 
uh, by another IF transformer to the second IF amp if your radio has two amps uh, and through another IF transformer to the detector and the first audio amp. The detector uh, cuts off half of the incoming uh, signal from the uh, IF, uh, converts the uh, remaining half to uh, audio and strips out all the IF frequency stuff so that all that comes out of the first audio stage here is just plain old sound um, that's passed capacitively coupled to the power amplifier and on out the speaker. Uh, these numbers up here represent the gain uh, of, the, of the signal uh, as it passes through the system. So that's an, that's an AM transmitter, or an AM receiver, sorry, AM superhead receiver. Now let's start adding in some stuff for uh, an FM using the same chassis. First of all, we have uh, the FM antenna that's connected to a uh, antenna coil. And note right here, there's a, a um, uh, iron core in the middle of this, of this side of the coil. That's a permeability tuned coil. In other words, instead of tuning the capacitance as you would on this side, you're going to tune the, 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 uh, the inductance in, the, in, this, in this coil uh, to select a station. Then that gets coupled up to the RF amplifier, same place the AM signal came in, where it's amplified. Uh, the detector coil is substituted in for uh, the AM detector coil. So now we have an FM detector coil instead, again with a, with a, a tunable uh, secondary on the, on the transformer. At this point, we swap out the uh, AM local oscillator and substitute an FM local oscillator. And the purpose of this is to mix, th it's the same purpose exactly. It's to mix uh, the incoming station, if you're listening to 8, uh, what, 101.9, uh, this local oscillator is going to create a signal that can be mixed with that 101.9 megahertz to create a IF frequency here of not 455, but of 10.7 uh, megahertz. That's our intermediate frequency through the rest of the radio. Then the process is exactly the same. We have, this is a new, uh, different um, uh, IF transformer than the AM1, but it works exactly the same. The uh, IF comes in here, goes through the transformer, gets amplified, goes through the transformer, gets amplified again, goes through the transformer, and ends up at what looks like the detector first audio of our AM stage, except that's not really true. What it really ends up doing is getting coupled to a limiter, which is a new circuit for FM. FM is, uh, the signal changes the frequency, but atmospheric noise, lightning strikes and such, can also change the amplitude of an FM signal. So in order to make sure there's no noise, and that noise will be uh, sent on through the rest of the radio and come out the speaker, um, so this thing, this limiter, actually clips the tops and bottoms of the FM as it's coming in from the second IF amp and uh, thereby gets rid of any amplitude noise, amplitude modulation noise that might be riding on top of the IF uh, frequency. So the limiter receives it, cuts the tops and bottoms off, passes it on to the detector for audio, which in fact becomes a discriminator uh, in the FM radio. The discriminator uh, changes the frequency modulated signal into an amplitude modulated signal. It converts, after all this work to get it over here, it converts it back into an amplitude modulated signal. Then it strips out the, um, strips out the IF information, the 10.7 megahertz, leaving only the, the audio, the sound that we wanted to get in the first place, gets capacitively coupled to the power amplifier and out it goes out your speaker. So those are the fundamental differences between AM and FM and they aren't much, they aren't many. The uh, signal gathering circuitry is different. It has, whoops, it has its own detector coil because it's picking up rather than uh, broadcast frequencies, it's picking up FM frequencies 
from 80 from 80 to 108 uh, megacycles. Uh, it has an old, old, its own local oscillator because you have to be able to mix those two to create this 10.7 megahertz uh, intermediate frequency. Uses the same amps. Uh, again, new new IF transformers, but it uses the same amps. Uh, the biggest difference is right here in this area right here. Uh, the limiter clipping the tops and bottoms off, and that's an oversimplification, but that's generally what it does. And then the detector, how it detects, how it converts FM, frequency modulation, into amplitude modulation, back into amplitude modulation, so that that can be sent out uh, the speaker. Um, so it's fundamentally it for adding uh, FM to this 9E21 chassis. Uh, now let's take a look at the schematic. Okay, here's the um, schematic for the 9E21 chassis. Uh, noted down here, the band switch is in the second position, so that lets us navigate uh, the band switches so we can follow the signal path. Um, what I'll do, this is kind of cluttered, what I'll do is uh, zoom us into this section right here. Um, We'll start here with the antenna section. Antenna, the FM antenna, as you probably know, FM antennas are considerably smaller than AM antennas, and usually a dipole of some kind. Um, depending on the sensitiv sensitivity of the receiver, well, I should say, in the case uh, where this chassis is mounted, or this, uh, yeah, this chassis is mounted, the radio on which this, this chassis is mounted, it uses a wire uh, dipole that's looped around the uh, inside of the case. And that's where the, that, those two wires, both ends of that, that dipole connect right here. So anyway, what do we have? We have, we have an antenna signal coupled in through here. Then goes through this transformer. And again, you'll note that this is an iron, has a powdered iron core that slides back and forth so you can adjust the, uh, the uh, FM uh, antenna coupling. So the RF gets transformed over here, goes up here to this switch, through to th there, oops, pardon my hand, through to there, and up to the grid of the uh, RF amplifier, the 6BA6, plunks right in there. Um, that, of course, is just an RF amplifier. Um, just, I don't know, just is the right word, but it is an RF amplifier. Uh, the output of the, uh, of the 6BA6 comes down here, out the plate connector, and into the FM detector coil, transformer rather, down through there. That gets transformed, coupled to the other side, the secondary, and again there's that sliding iron core. Um, and let's see. All right. Um, the RF now travels up here to this band switch, through here, up here, over to the grid of the converter. Now this is where the um, the uh, FM oscillator comes into play. Right here is the FM oscillator. Its output, it's oscillating away. Its output. Uh, GAN is controlled by, uh, the frequency of the oscillation is controlled by powdered iron core transformer. Um, so the output of the oscillator, we'll just draw it this way, comes down here through this switch, I'm sorry, this is the ground, <laughs> grounded end of the uh, oscillator. As you can see, that's how you activate it. When you turn it into this FM, you, you uh, get this oscillator pumping. We'll follow it in the right direction this time. 
um, out here, down here, over here, down through this part of the band switch. Come on, hands. You can do it. And back up to the other grid of the 6BE6. Whoops, right down through this capacitor, this coupling capacitor, into this grid. Uh, and this is where the magic happens. This is this takes the original RF, the station that we've selected using using our tunable coil, and we've uh, now mix it with the signal from the oscillator down through this switch and back up here to this other grid, uh, the 6B6 converter. And out the plate right here comes our IF signal, 10.7 megahertz in this case. And that's pretty universal, I think. Um, it wasn't always, and I don't recall, yeah. Uh, anyway, fed to the primary of the first uh, IF transformer, out that puppy, over here, up through here, and to the grid of the first IF amplifier, right there, the 6BA6. Gets amplified, out the plate, same thing, through the prior, pardon me, through the uh, primary of the second IF transformer through the secondary and onto the grid of the 6AU6 which is the second IF amplifier and then we do it again out the plate I can figure out where to put it out the plate down through the primary of the third IF transformer and out that puppy and on to the new stage in this radio that we haven't seen till now. And we'll, uh, we'll get that lined up in just a second. Okay, as I said, well, let's run the, run the IF uh, the rest of the way. out the secondary of the third IF transformer and into the grid of the 6AU6 limiter. Now the limiter's function uh, is to, in essence, this, this 6AU6 is configured in an interesting way. It's configured so that it uh, reaches maximum uh, am amplification, if you will, uh, at a very low level. It's biased so that it's not much of an amplifier. And when it hits uh, a certain amplification, the tops of the uh, IF signal coming in, the FM signal coming in, are clipped off. Uh, same thing when uh, the bottom halves of the, uh, uh, the uh, bottom halves of the IF signal are also clipped off and then um, then it proceeds out the plate. So at this point we have a truncated FM signal, but with absolutely no AM uh, content at all. Uh, the the uh, positive and negative excursions, remember this is an AC signal, so the positive peaks and the negative peaks uh, don't have any AM com uh, content at all. Otherwise, uh, it's going to go to this next stage and be converted back into an amplitude modulated signal, which is what the discriminator does. Uh, so we've got this thing that clips it, cleans it, cleans the tops and bottoms off, and only allows the uh, FM uh, frequency modulated carrier with uh, information on it to go through. No AM at all. Finally, through the uh, discriminator transformer, like that, and where it's picked up again by the secondary, up here, through to the 
plate of a diode. This is that 6T8. It's an odd duck. It has, it has three diodes, as I recall, and a triode all in one, in one uh, envelope. So there's one half of our, our, uh, our signal. And we're still in FM here until we get to this very point. The other side of that transformer goes over here, up through here, and to the plate of another diode right there. So now we have a dual diode. Uh, our FM signal is facing two diodes, which in essence turn the frequency modulated signal into a um, a amplitude modulated signal um, and that comes out right from this plate or this cathode right here this diode cathode right here this is AM now comes over here um, did I get that right yes yeah it goes to here this is where the uh, the uh, the carrier, the 10.7 megahertz carrier, uh, is stripped away. So there's nothing left but audio at this point. Audio comes down here. Over here. Up here. Over here. Down here. And out to our audio amplifier. Um, I should talk a little bit about this, although there isn't a lot to say. This simply is a low-pass filter. This low-pass filter uh, allows the audio, the only the audio section or audio portion of the uh, uh, discriminator output to be passed on to the rest of the circuitry. It, it sucks out all the FM, all the, uh, all, at this point AM, but all of the carrier information, all of the intermediate frequency information is sent straight to ground. Um, so this, this whole business here um, is used to clean up uh, the, the um, last of the FM. Remember the FM has been converted to AM right here in this, in this circuit. It's actually all of this circuit. Uh, the FM is converted to AM, then it comes over here, gets its gets its high frequency stuff stripped out, nothing but audio at this point, and on out the other end of the pipe. Um, so that's it. That's the signal flow. Uh, this is not a complete schematic, as you can tell, but um, the rest of it is as generic as beans. Um, so, uh, there's nothing more to say about this, I don't think. That's, that's the signal path. Um, the interesting things, again, and the new things, are the fact that there's a limiter here that clips the tops and bottoms off of the, of the uh, intermediate frequency. And then uh, the discriminator, which, uh, in cooperation with this transformer and these two um, capacitors, that you'll notice are s tied back to the upper side of the primary. And we'll talk about how this discriminator works in another video. But that's the FM, that's the mono FM uh, for the, six nine, or the 9E21. So I think that will be it for this. Oh, I've got one other thing to say, I guess. Let me... Uh, get this back out so we can see uh, more than the um, last thing I want to say about this is um, just this is a super heterodyne receiver and it needs to be aligned each one of these IF transformers even though they're 10.7 megahertz is their uh, resonant frequency uh, has to be at 10.7 megahertz um, the oscillator has to oscillate at the right frequency, whatever that is. I haven't discovered what that is yet, but it's the same math as, as uh, the oscillator frequency would be for uh, an AM radio, because it's doing the same thing. Um, this RF uh, transformer has to be uh, aligned uh, 
compensated for, I guess might be a better way to put it. But what you have to do here to get this in prime operating condition is exactly the same thing you have to do to the AM side. You have to make sure the IF transformers are aligned. You need to make sure that uh, it's getting as clean a signal to the uh, audio output as you can possibly uh, cause it to have. Now, my old signal generator uh, can just, oh, and I should say this, you can do the, you know, you may think you need a sweep generator and so on and so forth to uh, do this alignment, you do not. You need an unmodulated 10.7 megahertz uh, megacycle uh, carrier that you can inject here at the converter. And uh, you can do all the alignment on, on all of these, including uh, this guy, as a matter of fact, the uh, IF transformer, or the discriminator IF transformer. Um, however, I ran into a limitation with my test gear. My old signal generator has no problem at 455 megahertz. At 10.7, it can do that. It works based on harmonics of the, uh, uh, well, anyway, it can barely generate a usable 10.7 megahertz uh, signal. And uh, since I have another, yet another Zenith, the third one in a row, I want to get out the door uh, again with mono FM, about the same vintage of chassis. Um, I decided I wanted to go ahead and invest in an FM signal generator. Uh, and I found a, a um, what I think might be a good deal <laughs> on eBay for a used for a used signal generator, but you never know, do you? Anyway, it was nicely wrapped, and and uh, but I haven't cracked the package. Here's a picture of it. Um, this uh, includes a sweep generator. I'm you know a sweep. I haven't done a lot of FM alignment. Um, but I'm told that uh, a sweep generator is very useful. But what I am going to do is just use it to generate this 10.7 megahertz um, intermediate frequency. And once I get that running and can do that, we'll come back to this chassis and we'll see how to align the FM section uh, using the 10.7 IF, 10.7 um, megahertz IF uh, signal. Um, so we'll set this one aside for now and turn our attention to the new signal generator. We'll uh, make a series of videos on looking it over and popping the back and seeing if there's anything actually inside the cabinet. I expect there is. Uh, and seeing what it's going to take to make that work. Uh, once we get that all done, we'll come back to this chassis uh, and, uh, and do an uh, FM alignment on it. And I also, as I said uh, early on, I, I did a rough AM alignment. I need to go back in and, and, uh, and do that, do a better job of that. Uh, one thing I found uh, during the AM alignment was someone apparently thought that the um, trimmer caps on the uh, tuning cap, or tuning, yeah, tuning capacitor, uh, those screws were loose because every one of them was tightened down tight, <laughs> which made it not very responsive. It works much better now. Uh, okay, that's it for this one. Enough rambling. Uh, getting back in the saddle after a long absence. Um, thanks to those who inquired. Uh, all is fine. I just had some other things to have taken care of, including new eyes. I, I, I got my uh, cataracts fixed which helps me a lot uh, be able to see what I'm looking at. So anyway, till next time, see ya, take care, be safe.